It's your boy Tony Ortiz back again with another Not This Week in Brave Axvius. And here's what I promised months ago <clears throat> our foray into the what was then unknown but now is known um, state of the game Final Fantasy Brave Axvius. And the reason we're not logged in tonight. <clears throat> Before we start chatting about this this topic, this issue, uh, this I don't know, like quandary, this conundrum, if you will, um, it's because this art right here. I wanted to talk about it before we uh, before we go any anywhere further forward. This art that is on the splash screen now is the art that they showed us on the live stream a couple weeks ago and they they teased in the live stream hey look at this character on the right in the middle who is this oh and then they later revealed that character in the exact same live stream as one of the most boring character designs we've ever had and although we didn't have the data mine or the full set of abilities for that character at the time we then got those about four days later. And we found that this character is basically just a 30% higher amp for a single element than some of the other damage dealers that we have available. And that they have no support for party members, even though they were on an element that could have been super useful, wind. And that they were premium and blah, 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 blah. And I started my show off of the excitement, the hype, the proverbial we're on the right path moment of sixth anniversary. And here we are a year later. On the week after anniversary, when I started, I don't know if you want to call it doing content, but I'll say that when I started commentary, the very least what I did was commentary on this game. Um, I was so excited, I was so hyped from 6th anniversary, I got two different people who had quit this game back into the game off of 6th anniversary, Okay. And here we are at 7th anniversary, and even throughout the lowest points of 2022, after anniversary, and even throughout the lowest points of 2023, before anniversary, up until this date, I thought, no matter how bad they screw things up, they can turn it around if they have another anniversary, like the 6th anniversary, like the 5th anniversary. We have a live in-person event coming. This could be the chance. And we've talked about that at length. And, uh, well, you know, it is what it is. But um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do this with a positive spin. Let me first say that I appreciate all the content creators out there who, no matter what may be going on in the back of their mind, no matter what they may know to be true about what's going on in this game in the back of their mind, they can still keep a positive uh, outlook on it. That's something I just cannot do. I cannot do that if... I cannot look on the bright side when I've been shown the dark side year after year after month after month after day after day and so on. I just can't bet on the future being good when it's and it, when the future hasn't been good for an extended period of time. And like I said, this is praise. This is not a knock. I, I can't do it. And I admire the people that can do that. I admire the people that can stay positive in the face of 
uh, heavy adversity. Um, because I can't. I can't. I never have been. And I've been a leader. And I've been a follower. You know, I've been in charge. I've been a lieutenant. I've been a capo. I've been a rank and file. And I just can't get behind something that feels doomed. So here we are. Here's the art. And, you know, when I first saw this on the live stream, I was like, I love it. I love it. Because it's an original piece of artwork. And outside of, like, the occasional character portrait that we get on a card, whether it's Cool Smile or the new Fire card or whatever, we very rarely get exclusive or even decent drawn art, right? Like, you know, we've gotten a bunch of cards, and we'll, we'll cycle through them in a few minutes, but we've gotten a bunch of cards that, like, look really nice, but then you go to set them as your your background. And as good as the art is, it's not animated the way that a lot of the other cards are. And it feels not so great. Um, and then a lot of them get assigned the generic music in game. They don't get the good music that they should get. And it's just, it's it, you know, it, the novelty wears off, right? And... I hate to say this, and it has nothing to do with what's happened in the last two weeks of the game. But the more I stare at this art, the more I think... Why? Why was this chosen over anything else? And in previous years, I would have had an answer for you because I would have had other art to compare it to. I would have seen 10, 12, 15, 20 submissions online months in advance. And I probably would have been able to vote on it. Because that's the way this game used to do things. Remember when we had the unit submission contest? And people submitted all these different unit concepts and we voted on them. Doesn't it seem like that was like two and a half years ago? You know why it seems like it was two and a half years ago? Because it fucking was that long ago. Like when you voted for Behemi and for Nappy and for Igni, it was that long ago. Okay? And none of those units were really done properly. Like, Behemi was good enough on launch, but the other ones were, were definitely lacking and, and, and never got their time to shine, really. And you think to yourself, why are we here at seven years and we have less than we had two years ago. There's games out there right now on mobile celebrating their 9th and 10th anniversaries that are massive, that are huge, that still have global, truly global followings out there that are worse games than Final Fantasy Rave Exvius. 100% worse games in practice, in mechanics, and in how much time you have to dedicate towards them. They have more content, they have act more active player bases, and they garnish more revenue. And why is that? And that's because, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the content just can't it just can't keep pace. It isn't here. The content is not here. And this artwork the only artwork we've seen for Anniversary at all. It's kind of like a microcosm of how Gumi operates to me. 
you know, my opinion, of course. They see one thing, they grab it, they throw it up there, they say, cool, job's done, on to the next thing. And they don't care about what we give a shit about. Like, they don't care about what the global community cares about. They don't care about our motivations and our desires as players. They just dump stuff into this version of the app. They expect us to just blindly pull on the characters we like, whether they suck in game or they don't. And they're totally fine with whatever they sell and don't sell. Because they've already sort of moved on. They've moved on to War of the Visions. And even though War of the Visions isn't really doing all that well, they have this delusion that once BE proper is so poor that everybody just doesn't want to play anymore, well, they'll all come to War of the Visions because they're loyal to Final Fantasy's brand and there's no other turn-based game they can go to, so they're just going to come to us. And I think... Historically, they're not actually wrong to think that. Final Fantasy is one of those properties that garners a ridiculous amount of loyalty from its fan base when it really shouldn't. And I can empathize with this to an extra, extra level because... I'm a fan of some sports teams that haven't done very well in the last, I don't know, 10 to 15 years. Let's just say that, right? Depending on your definition of success. And the Final Fantasy IP, at least in the mainline single-player console realm, has done very poorly in the last 10 to 15 years, okay? Okay. And um, in terms of quality, I'm not saying in sales. Like, did Final Fantasy XII sell well? Sure. Did Final Fantasy XIII uh, Game 1 sell, sell well? Uh, it, it looks to have sold well when you factor in the Japanese numbers plus the NTSC numbers. How did Final Fantasy XV do? On launch, it did pretty well. Then it hit this giant slump where nobody was interested at all and nobody was even looking at it. Then once the Royal Edition or whatever came out with all of the things that you actually needed to have to experience the entire story, then it did a small uptick, and then players realized the empty uh, empty open world was just really boring and bland, and then it just fell off a cliff again. And I think you're going to see that with 16, whereas like 16's initial hype has been very, very positive, right? But is anybody going to be playing Final Fantasy 16 in three months without DLC? I don't think so. Is anybody going to be speed running Final Fantasy 16 in six months? Well, definitely not because the game is three quarters cutscenes. Why would you speed run a game where 75% of it is mashing the confirm button? Or hitting. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess if you hit start to skip the cutscene in like a new game plus or whatever, or if you can, or, or. You know, sure. You know. But the, the value that we used to get out of Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 6, even Final Fantasy 7's original version to a lesser extent, that part of the game space that Square used to do so well is just gone. But why is it gone? Why is that quintessential classic RPG formula literally dead and gone from their offerings. I have to tell you, it's pretty obvious. It's not because they can afford to let it go. Obviously, they can. Why can they afford to let that classic RPG feel sort of go away and just give you a Devil May Cry version and slap uh, of the game and slap Final Fantasy on the on the tin. It's because there's so many people that are loyal to the IP no matter what they do with it. 
Like, this shouldn't surprise you if you've been following this intellectual property, no matter how far back you go. There's so many people that played 12 and all three versions of 13 and all the weird iterations of 15 that have pre-ordered 16 that, that fell over loving Final Fantasy VII Remake, even though it's not a remake, it's a reboot, and it's not even a remaster, it's a complete fucking rebuild. Like, none of these games, if you love the old school games, are anywhere near in the same genre. So why are you into them? Is it the storytelling? Is it the... Uh, the ambiance, is it the music? It could be any one of those things. But I think it's undeniable that if you love Final Fantasy VI and you love Final Fantasy XVI, it's undeniable that you can admit that they are nowhere near each other in the gaming space. They're not even remotely close to each other mechanically uh, at all. It, it, it's, it's obvious that this is the case, right? And if this is reality, we should be able to easily draw comparisons, positive or negative, between the two things and understand why some people are along for the ride and some people are not. And I think this all circles back to Brave Axius in the exact same way that Gumi, and to a lesser extent, Alim, the Japanese developer of this game, and Square, the publisher, they have all settled for, look, this mobile game makes money. It's not going to make money forever because for it to make money for forever, we'd have to put some real, real, real hard effort into it, right? And let's just make as much money as we possibly can while we can. And that's, I think, what you're seeing. I think that's what you're seeing in the Alim side. I think that's what you're seeing to a very higher extent in the Gumi side. I think that's what you're seeing in War of the Visions on Gumi side as well. The game cares about selling you the characters first. And then it uses as little resources as possible to generate original characters that actually clear the content. And between the Mark, who will buy anything with Final Fantasy on it, even if it's trash and, and not a good experience, and then the Whale who wants to clear all content no matter what and pulls every week, or every three out of every four weeks, you know. Between those two players, I think Gumi, Alim, Square, they all understand that there's enough money to be made with a minimum amount of effort on this and that's all we're interested in we have no desire to turn this into a massive cult following by delivering a great product because that would take 50 percent more effort but probably would only get us about 15 to 20 percent more revenue and that's where brave xvs is today folks it's on the downward curve because Squeenix, Gumi, Alum don't want that extra 10-20% out of your wallet that would require a lot of hard work and dedication when they can just collect the nostalgia bucks and the whale bucks and keep the lights on and then some. The running joke with Global is that it's the number one skip content app, you know, cloned app out there. They skip everything they possibly can from JP. And we know that it's more difficult to alter the code than to leave it alone. We've been told this by former employees. We've been told this by people close to the game, the data miners, 
the data mine both JP and the fucking global versions, we know that it's actually more work to take something out than to leave it in. And that's why they leave the bugs in and they take the good content that we want out. Because then they can drip feed it and nickel and dime you more. And there's a reason I stopped doing my weekly show. There's a reason I don't watch live streams anymore uh, uh, when they're actually live. And there's a reason that I don't dedicate one of my days of the week to this game anymore. And there's a reason why I'm playing two different mobile games at a higher login and attention rate than this game. And it has nothing to do with my love for Final Fantasy or not, or my, or not, you know, or whatever. It has everything to do with the way that Gumi does business. And every time I, I load up the game now and I look at this art screen, all I can think about is as high of a milestone as every anniversary is from five and onward in the mobile space where people's attention spans are very fleeting. And I think back to when I came back to the game over two years ago. Maybe maybe almost three years ago, actually. And I see this artwork and I think, this is pretty cool, but why is this literally the only piece of artwork I've seen from the community in this entire calendar year in-game? And not to mention, there's three characters on this artwork that are absolutely dead in the water and unusable. And the character in the middle, Elena, who is constantly in the top three or higher of every popularity poll, got a new version who isn't premium, but is not, a, not like a guaranteed useful unit beyond next Wednesday. Literally, this Elena that we've been using for the last week may be completely obsolete in six days because she's not a good enough spirit tank to tank off element. She has a ton of other character uh, uh, design flaws. This unit has a ton of design flaws. And we got a spirit tank three, four months ago that is like the best in class at the same pr at the same cost. And poor boy Wilk up in the top right there gets no buffs. He was the premium unit from last anniversary. And even though he was he ended up being garbage. A lot of us didn't really regret on pulling for him because we got a bunch of Sylvies as well, and, and she still remains one of the best units in the game. <clears throat> but if you went for Rick and you didn't pull any Ricks and you went to Pity and you got an Elena or two, I can't help but feel like you feel you don't feel great. You don't feel as good as you felt last year. Especially if you were me and you skipped you skipped um Esther. And you were able to go grab Esther, you know, and Sylvie on your way to Wilk. I mean, I've never been in the gaming space since I was a little kid until today and seen a company do well in spite of itself. Even when World of Warcraft or like, you know, uh, Blizzard or whatever, whatever they had, even when they had massive success, if they couldn't get out of their own way, they bled supporters and revenue. And what's so bizarre to me is that this IP has maybe the greatest comeback story in the history of video games in Final Fantasy XIV. And it seems like 
no one under the Square Enix umbrella has been able to learn from that success at all. It really feels like a guy came along and slapped the blueprint down on how to make a massive success. Consumers responded with their wallets. And then in that property, anything goes. But they haven't been able to apply it to any of their other properties. It's like the Ubisoft conundrum where like they made one open world game once that did well. And then they decided to make every single game in their entire catalog an open world game. Even though, when, even though it didn't fit in most of their intellectual properties. And now they're at this crossroads where, like, nobody will buy anything that they make because literally every single game that they make is the same. Even when it's programmed by another one of their studios that they own on the other side of the fucking world, nobody will be able to, like, play that game for more than a month without going, this is stupid, I'm out. It's so bizarre to be here, you know, when... We were looking at Final Fantasy XII trailers and Final Fantasy XIII trailers back when I was a little bit younger of a man. I thought, oh, they can bounce back from this. Like, Final Fantasy XI is, is gold. And then I played the beta for fourteen, and I thought, uh-oh, this is really bad. This might be the death knell that kills this IP for forever. And I underestimated the amount of people that will support this IP no matter how bad the product gets. And Final Fantasy XIV being the, like I said, the greatest comeback story in the history of gaming, potentially, if not assuredly, the best story and ever. It did a lot of work, but if you play, if you try to play 15, if you try to play 16, I just don't understand where the mainline series is headed. I, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why and how these games are made and who they're even for because there's people that will follow the IP until they die for no reason for no good reason it's it's a it's a gambler's fallacy a smoker's fallacy a drunk's fallacy a junkie's fallacy even but there are plenty of people who will ditch the series for bad content and bad gameplay because they're not loyal to the IP and I don't understand what the action gameplay in the mainline series is accomplishing because they think it's reaching a new audience, but I don't really think it is at all. Like, they don't do it better than anyone else. They don't even do it half as good as anyone else. I mean, I'm not a Dark Souls guy, but they have multiple games of the year in their catalog from Soft. I'm not a, a God of War guy, but they have multiple games of the year. Sony, uh, the studio that produces that for Sony. When has Square Enix ever made an action combat game that's been universally beloved by critics and players? They haven't. Ever. And they didn't with this last entry. I was very surprised to see that several of the critics that I actually really trust, that I think I'm very like-minded with, come back after Final Fantasy 16 and say, okay, it looks great, but there's no substance here. There's no gameplay here. There's nothing new here, which is what this IP is supposedly known for. And there hasn't been in a long time. And what's absurd about that is that this was made by the guy who oversaw that greatest renaissance return from the doldrums death knell property of Final Fantasy XIV and brought it back to life and it's been massively successful ever since. That same guy put his hands on the mainline franchise and could not produce something that's compelling for most of the old school audience. And I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, about any of this, 
other than that I can't see it ending well. Let's click the tap to start button. And hope that someone somewhere in one of these companies says there's more to do here and we need to buckle down and get it done. Because I think that Square, especially with their selling off their Western properties to Embracer, and I think that the companies that publish things with the Square license, I think they've all kind of just decided to like go that like um, Ubisoft, EA sort of route where they just go, oh yeah, we have IPs that are popular. This Pokemon style of game development where like we'll just keep churning out the same shit over and over and people love our IP so they'll keep buying it up. And I think that that's okay if you're trying to bridge the gap between like a console generation or, you know, you're trying to replenish like a workforce because maybe these like all-star programmers and game designers that you had for like seven or eight years have moved on and you really need to like cultivate like a new team of like young guns or something like I can understand like a, a poor launch of a title as like a holdover or a stopgap right but what is Square done since Final Fantasy 10 and Final Fantasy X, to me, the story is really poor. The gameplay is great. The, the story is poor. What have they done since X that's, like, worth even speaking about? Not much. That's not an MMO. They've had two MMOs that have done really well. And that's it. In, what, almost 20 years? I came to Brave Exodus because the game respected my time. I was playing a Korean mobile game that like wanted me to be logged in for eight hours a day, and then it wanted me to sack like an hour and a half to two hours of my weekend to jump in with two guildmates to like clear end game content and so on. And I just I just couldn't do it anymore. So the reason I popped this back open was because it was an IP I loved, and I was aware that from friends that I had that had played the game that had never really stopped playing it. At least not stopped, like, you know, logging in every day. Maybe they stopped playing it actively. But they were like, yeah, you can log in, you can burn all your resources fairly quickly, and then you can log out. And then you can come back 10 hours later and log in again and burn, like, the, the little resources you earned, and then you can go to bed and you can rinse and repeat and you'll never really be punished for having an active lifestyle or like other things to do or playing other games. And I was like, oh, okay, that, that sounds like Final Fantasy XIV to me. It sounds like I can just take a break and then come back and, you know, do what I need to do as needed and, and I'm, I'll still enjoy myself. And that's why I picked this game up. And I, I really like the community. The community uh, of people in this game are great. They're awesome people. Like, there's always people active and chatting and like, you know, and, and what makes me sad about the state of the game is not that, like, I am personally impacted by it and it makes me uh, not interested in playing and so on and forth. I, the, real, the real issue I have with the poor state of this game is that I really like the community that plays it and they deserve better. You know, like, they deserve more. And if you go back and watch my live stream review, if you, if you watch my thoughts my like recalculated thoughts and like talking about like the player's voice and stuff the the overall like theme the overarching theme is like i'm not upset i'm not mad i'm disappointed i'm sad because i used to play games where people would say what are you doing on your phone and i'd have to be like oh it's like this pokemon knockoff or oh it's like this whatever knockoff or oh it's like and for the last few years i've been able to be on my phone and people are, oh what are you playing on your phone i'm like i'm playing final fantasy on my phone and most people who aren't even like core gamers if i said i'm playing final fantasy on my phone would understand what i was saying you know 
is it on the Fortnite Call of Duty level? No, but it's it's that that next tier right below there, right? And I could show them the game, and I could show them my enthusiasm, and they might actually genuinely genuinely be interested, and and especially if they're a little older and they have nostalgia for the old school games and a lot of the turn based stuff, because that's what BE is. It's turn based, you know. And um, again, I said I've got people back into this game within within a year. And I feel bad about getting them back into it because it's been so poor since then. You know, they've they skip content, the uh, they don't buff units the way they should, they 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 don't give us the content. The, the the excuse is we get clash of wills, but then and then they skip everything to supposedly make that happen. Is it really worth the trade, you know? And I just don't know. I just don't know, you know. I, I go back and forth on that all the time. Because Clash seems awesome, but, you know, if you really think about it, if you have a good box full of units and, you know, you see a strategy that works, I mean, the first two out of every three bosses in a season, you can just replicate a strategy and you kill it within a couple hours and then you're done. And that's supposedly two weeks of content that you don't spend playing the game, you know, and okay i guess and and they give you enough resources to be able to buy all the gear and you know i've missed a bunch of rank ones i missed maybe three or four this will be the fourth rank one i missed since december of last year and i have so much extra currency that and all of the uh clash gear that i just don't care and i feel like that's the game's not in a good place if the only content for two weeks is a clash of wills, and I'm done with it in an hour, and then I'm and then I'm just checked out, you know. And again, I love that the game respects my time to the degree of finish this clash of wills, and then you can take 13 days off. But how can I be motivated to then give them 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month if I'm not spending? more than two to four days a month on the game, you know. And I think that's where the real problem is going to come in when it's all said and done, is that you can only sell these NFTs of characters that people love for so long with no practical use in a game, without an engaging game, with, without gameplay, with so many things skipped, before eventually people go, you know what, I'm not going to buy Ramza, I'm not going to buy Agrius, I'm not going to buy anything that's coming because even if I do, I don't have anything to do with them in the app. And I think that's what's ultimately going to sink this app is eventually the players who pull off nostalgia for units they love from previous entries into the franchise are going to go, wait a minute, I can just fire up my emulator and play the old game. I can fire up any of these remastered versions and play the old game, like, why am I paying Square again for the 5th, 6th, 7th time to have a little unit of pixel art in this game where I can't even use them to do half of the content that I want to do? And, um... I think that's eventually what's going to sink it. I think there's already too many people on the free-to-play mantra... And I think only with this week of an anniversary, only more people are going to find themselves in that boat. And um, I don't have a way to spin that in a positive manner. I just don't have a way to like think that this is all going to work out because I just don't think that Gumi gives a shit. You know, we press as a community for a fan meetup and we've talked about this in previous videos and recordings we get a fan meetup with less than two months notice not in the middle of the, the, the North American region but like on one of the coasts and it's in a city which is like one of the three most expensive cities to fly into in the entire North American continent and then not only is that happening but we get a bare bones, super weak stream 
to a room full of like, I don't know, 50 people or something, 50 to 60 people, we try to do the math on how many people are there. When like at a real like at a real meetup that was tied into like a different convention or something, we could have had a thousand people maybe. Like, I don't know, piggyback it onto like Evo in Las Vegas in like a couple months and say, hey, we're gonna do our live stream from whatever in on the strip and come on into this tourist town and the same weekend that like this huge event's going on. And uh, enjoy that event, and then also enjoy our event, you know. And maybe it's more difficult for them because, like, E3 and stuff used to pull people into LA, and it, like that—that's dead now or whatever. Because this is about E3 time, right? But like, why is that the excuse? You know, like, why is Gumi not adapting to E3 being dead? You know, why are they not looking for a convention in San Diego or LA or San Jose or something? to like piggyback into to give people a real reason to travel and why are they not announcing the meetup like six months eight months ten months in advance so that people can actually make plans to come in and support and then have a full room for your live stream have an actual raucous crowd have people like that are super excited for stuff even if it's not like delivering and I think for me the kicker and I hate to go back to this because I don't want to call anybody out individually that works for the company, but the kicker for me is that for probably like a little over a year, and I don't know if this is a translation problem or what, but our community manager we lost, who was fantastic, who, who really drove the player's voice to the people who make the game. We lost her in a tragedy and the replacement has not really been anywhere near as active nor have they immersed themselves in the global community. And um, I hate to call this out because it's actually not something that happens very often. I play a bunch of games where the community managers for those games do not do a great job of being community managers. I play a lot of games in the past and I don't play all very regularly today where the same scenario is correct. So I'm not saying that this is an anomaly. It's the norm. But it's it's disappointing to me that this is the norm, right? That if you get paid a decent salary to be a community manager of a game and you don't know or understand your community or you don't know or understand the game you know that you that you hold this position it's like going to hr in a corporation where it's like okay i know hr is not on my side i know they're paid by the company but i just wish that like or hope that somebody in this department that's supposed to be like advocating for me actually cares enough or is actually a decent enough human being or actually an ethical enough human being to actually do those things and then like you're always disappointed by like you know reality because reality is reality right it's never as good as you fantasize it may be in your head and that's where we are in this game like it could be so much better than it is but it isn't for a myriad of reasons none of which are ridiculous they're all understandable but they're all reasons that you would hope like a good director would have said whoa if we care about the long term future if we care about the long term growth if we care about long term revenue we wouldn't be doing things this way and it's clear to me that Gumi doesn't have that that Square doesn't have that above them. At least the people who are in charge of monitoring licensed uh, materials are not paying that much attention. And uh, Let's just talk about 6th Anniversary very briefly. 6th Anniversary last year 
not only did they have all the units and the content and so on last year, but during that anniversary stream last year, they gave us the results of a popularity poll. They showed us the sprite of the unit they were going to make off the popularity poll. And they also announced the the marquee collaboration for the year. All in that one stream, they did all of that. Okay, we got near announced. Didn't didn't come till much later, but you know we knew about it. We got Chizuru. We we were told about Chizuru. She came in September, as a clash unit in September. A couple months later, fantastic. We got all those announcements. We got a rerun that we all wanted. All that stuff happened. And that was done remotely. And this year they, they went out of their way to have a live event. And we got about half the amount of news, releases, and blah, blah, and, and so on and so forth. And I think that's because they had such a weak year in between. I think that the, the brains of the operation on the programming side are gone. I think that the brains of the operation on the marketing side are gone. I think the I think the people that are responsible for making this app, this game successful, I think most of them have departed uh, Gumi for sure. Maybe even Alim on the Japanese side of um, you know the localized app. And uh, I think that there's no desire from Square or Gumi to replace these people, to replace this talent. I think that this app's golden years are behind us and I'm saddened by that and um, it won't be the first time that I see an app like this wither but I'm, I'm still glad that I got to meet a lot of the people that are in it I'm still glad that despite you know my opinions and my willingness to to vocalize them and how that disqualifies me from participating in a lot of other things involving this community and this app despite all of that I still love the people that uh, love this game this app and I hope to follow them to whatever app replaces this in the long run you know in the hearts and minds of all those people um I don't think it's going to be War of the Visions for sure, and I and I've said this during my run creating content or commentary for this game. I've said it since I've decided to stop that. I still say it today. I don't I don't care that like I can't be as active as I would like to be because of the opinions I have about the way the company that runs this game operates but I don't blame anybody in this community for not being able to um, you know bridge that gap I, I totally understand like if you want to be invited to their fan events you can't have somebody that dissents against the company on your on your program like I, you can't have somebody involved that you know like actually has, some negative stuff to say when it's warranted, you know, like you, you can be Sinzar and be like the most popular content creator for this game. And you can say, this pisses me off when they do this stuff and it's wrong. And people will be like, cool, but you can't be like the average person. And then like go on anyone else's programming, but his and agree, you know, <laughs> like you just can't do that. It's just not an opportunity that's afforded to people like me. Right. Um, But I understand why that is the way it is. Like, you don't you don't get invited to the fan event. You don't get like anything from the company by not playing ball. That's the way things work, you know. I just I'm so sad that like that's what it's come down to, you know. Like, um, you've got to play ball. And never say anything negative about these guys, even when they fuck up to the to the nth degree. Every clash has been broken on launch, you know, for ten months straight, right? You know, um, maybe that's why people aren't buying Crest Pass anymore. You know, maybe that's why people aren't buying the freaking 
stuff that is, is shitty value. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with like the consumer and it has more to do with the quality of the application, right? <clears throat> but you can't say those things directly to the company because they don't like to hear those things. And I think that's the that's the main issue with some of the more That's the main issue with some of the community. And I think that a lot of times the company, when they have poor community management, they dial into these these voices that say, oh, yes, I love this and I love that. And they, they stick to the positives, but they don't ever bring up the negatives. They don't ever bring the criticism. And uh, if there was any chance for things to get fixed, it's killed at that level. It's not even it's not even able to be, to be pulled up the chain. And then that, when they're sitting in a meeting... Wondering why revenue's down for the last three quarters in a row or whatever it is. And they have this vital data where like the community's unhappy, you know, and it doesn't get brought to light, you know. I'm not saying a lot of boardrooms would change course anyway, but if there was a chance that they would, not having that that reason to do so is is, is a big problem. And uh Yeah, here we are, you know, the state of the game. I mean just look at this menu, and then it'll tell you everything you need to know. You know, if you don't, if you don't pull on the units for the third clash, you're not getting it done. Um, they're gonna fix, they're gonna fix item world, sometime in the future, maybe, sort of. You know, maybe at the end of this month, sometime. They have a clash of wills on right now, where they said they were gonna upgrade two B. Yesterday. But they put a little asterisk on it in the live stream just to make sure that if they didn't upgrade 2B, that you couldn't cry about it. You know? And never mind if you don't have an EX2 Elena or you don't have Rick. Are you clearing this are you clearing this clash? You know, without like an EX3 Ibarra from, from months ago, or like do you have to dump a bunch of money to it to an Ibarra right now to clear it? Yeah. To rank one it? Yeah, absolutely you do. And um, I just don't care enough anymore to to, to do that. I, maybe it's because my money's tighter, and I'm like I I have other things I want to do with it than I have in the last couple of years. But I just look at having to pull on Rick or having to pull on Ibarra, who's not even like that flexible of a unit. And I just I just think this isn't an anniversary. This isn't like a celebration of the game. This is just another week where a premium unit gets launched who's boring and uninteresting and probably will be power crept in like two, three months, if if not sooner. And doesn't support the party in any way, so they're not evergreen. They're not gonna be like Sylvie where you're gonna be using them a year later and and the content just isn't there. Like we've skipped vengeful we we had chamber chamber of the vengeful was announced the last anniversary they put a single fucking boss in it and then pretended like it didn't exist after that after selling us on oh we're going to put like one out of every four to seven clash bosses in here and you're going to be able to have new content randomly throughout the year nope fucking it's out of here we don't care it doesn't exist bye we aban we abandoned this fucking thing again we brought it back to abandon it again you know It's not even it's not even the lack of content, the, the lack of delivery in the product and, and so on and so forth. It's not even that that really upsets me. It's the insult to our intelligence. Right? It's it's the it's the you expect me to show up to a fan meetup event in LA, you know, I live in I don't know, the Midwest, the South, the East the north, you know, Texas even, where I got to drive, what, 12 hours to get there? And I can't book a flight because if I'm booking a flight within two months, I'm paying double minimum to, to go to L.A. And I just paid for a flight within a month to Europe, and it's actually cheaper than booking a less than a month flight to L.A., okay? It literally drained my savings. 
that I've been saving for years. So, the insult to my intelligence is is a really really disappointing thing. The 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 fake Q and A's on live streams where they don't even answer the questions. The the constant denial of, you know, like actually caring about this fucking product. I'm just over it. I'm I'm, I'm over it. I'm done with it. And um, I sincerely hope that most people that I, I love and respect in this community, I sincerely hope that you find something better to do with your money. Because when this is over, it's going to be the same as Record Keeper, okay? They're going to give you a couple months notice. They're going to shut it the fuck down. And your, your shit's going to be gone for forever. Because I guarantee you, this game will find a point, especially on a weekly release schedule that relies on people to pull for their fucking NFT favorite units every week. No other game in the fucking App Store anywhere has a new unit every week. Not a single fucking game. You cannot find one. This is the only one that has to have a new unit or two or three every fucking week. It is a gacha machine beating you over the head with with the physical fucking metal and, and plastic gacha fucking components, okay, and the makeup of the machine. And half the time, the stuff you pull out of the machine... Not only is it not what you want, but it's not even usable to do the content what little there is in the game. I sincerely hope the people that spend money on this game find something better to do with their money in the next six months. I really do. I I hope that they find something better to do. I haven't spent any money on BE this year. And I'm glad I haven't. And I won't. And I will continue to not. And it makes me sad that I don't want to spend any money. Because you know when a free-to-play game, quote-unquote free-to-play game, is doing poorly? It's doing poorly when the people who play it every day don't want to send five or ten bucks towards the people that make the game. That's when you're in bad shape, folks. When the majority of your player base logs into this game every day and they don't want to send you five bucks a month or ten bucks a month to say thanks for making this product that I enjoy, when that's where we're at, I mean, you might be able to survive off of whales, but you know one thing about whales that's funny? They're not the ones loyal to this IP. Most of them aren't. The second a different company licenses the Final Fantasy product and brings out a different app that's better than yours, they're gone. And that's that's assuming that the whales in this game even give a shit about the IP. A lot of times they don't. A lot of times the whales in a game just... It was the newest game the day they decided to be a whale. And they just jumped in and, and they're here until... The swag is worn off of being number one, right? Or being number 10 or whatever. You can't build a true juggernaut off of the richest 1% buying your product. You can be Ferrari. You can be, you know, Rolls Royce, right? But are you gonna are you gonna sell enough product? To be a global force, to be a to be like a leader, no, you're never going to sell enough Ferraris or Rolls Royces or Lamborghinis to be like a market deciding entity. You know, you got to sell pickup trucks, you got to sell SUVs, you got to sell cars. You know, and if you can't do that, you're on borrowed time. Tick, tick. Tick, tick. Gumi Nor Alem. 
can even fix the fucking friends list, okay? You can have 200 friends, and you can't find any of them to throw in your party and do a mission half the time when you need to do it, okay? So, that's where we're at. What's the state of the game in 2023 of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius? It's not good. At best, it's mid. At worst, it's just a turn-based game that's nostalgia for us turn-based RPG players who don't get turn-based games made for them anymore. The power creeps out of control. The global version doesn't care enough about its players to leave content in that's more trouble for them to remove. But yet they'll leave bugs in and they won't fix them from the Japanese version. And I'm just sad that like a game that two or three years ago was like super exciting has turned into like a chore. I used to enjoy talking about it and I just don't anymore. No, I'm sad about that. I'm sad about the community and that plays the game that feels the same way. I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but I think the numbers don't lie. And I think a lot of people who used to play this game and don't play it anymore or begrudgingly still log in every day, I think there's a lot more of them than you think there are. And I think that the way that Gumi handles this app is a direct response to that very fact. Because I don't think an app that's thriving and making a ton of money gets treated this poorly. That gets neglected this way. Speaking from experience, coming from other Korean apps that are still top 25, top 50 grossing apps that are 9 and 10 years old, that are older than this game. So... C'est la vie. What can you do? I think six months ago I said I hope this turns around and I think 7th anniversary might be the only way they can do it. And that definitely didn't happen. So. Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. It's on borrowed time. I don't see a way back from here. I don't see a way back from them phoning in an anniversary. Not even being able to announce the collab during the anniversary. Not even be able, being able to show us the fan-voted unit. They don't even have a sprite of either of Malfazy's base form or ship form to show us. In a week, we'll have the unofficial live stream, and I hope that goes well. But I just don't. I don't know how I can celebrate something that really feels like it's dying to me. I can celebrate the life that I remember it living and, and you know I can reflect on the good times and I can have nostalgia for the good times and I can do all that but I don't know it, to me it's like you walk into a hospital and you see a very important person in your life on life support and you know it's over and you know you might have to walk into that hospital every day for the next 6 to, to 10 to 12 months, maybe longer, before they finally let go. But you know it's coming and it's not going to get any easier. Every day you, you walk in there, you know, and... uh
I don't know. Maybe it's the perspective I've gained in the last couple months. I've never been a, a, a massive optimist. But I've seen games turn around like Final Fantasy XIV. I've seen games turn around like No Man's Sky. And, I, and I've seen... I've seen things happen, you know, so that that small glimmer of hope is there for me still, even now, but the odds, the odds are just terrible. <laughs> and, uh, I made a lot of bad bets in my day, but I knew they were bad bets when I made them, and I made them anyway, and, and I just can't. I can't see betting on Brave Exvius at this time and hoping for anything short of mediocrity. So that's it, folks. We're done with BE and I think I think we're done with BE permanently. I think it's time to move on. I think that again, I will still support this community. I'll still log in every day. I'll collect my rewards until this game is dead. But will I ever make time to play it again? Will I ever try to get to a fan meetup if another one even ever happens? You know, will I take days off of work to be a part of this I don't think so not when there's so many other options not when so many other communities are treated better than this not when the outlook of so many other live services are so much more positive so If you thought the if you thought the sign off for this week in Brave Exodus was somber, I mean I'll do you one better and say this one's downright depressing, but I think that's it for me and FFBE. I think any hope for a turnaround is gone and I think it's onwards and upwards on different things to do from here. You know, this summer is it's been nice, but you know, we've got all sorts of huge stuff coming in the gaming space and I just don't think I have the don't think I have the time or the the patience for uh the shortcomings of this anymore. So I think this is an apropos goodbye, and uh, thanks for the memories. So, I'm good with it. Hope to see you guys at the unofficial live stream in a week. Please check that out. You know, if you're going to support any part of Brave Exodus, I really hope you would support the great community of people who play it and the content creators around the game. They deserve your support so much more than Gumi does. Um, so I hope that you guys uh, find your way over to the unofficial live stream. Just Google uh, unofficial FFB and you should find uh, all the information you need. And, uh, hey, it was a hell of a ride. Not many roller coasters have the ups and downs to compare to this, but... Um, every roller coaster ride has to pull back into the uh, the station, you know, where you, you get people on and get people off, so... Heading around that last bend and pulling in... And,
My time has come. The song is over. There's nothing more to say. Hopefully I see some of you guys in some of the other content. Take care of each other. And uh, take care of yourselves. Da, 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 da.